Hey guys, welcome back. I am glad that you are here. If you're new here, I am Lori. Welcome to my channel and to all of those who are returning. Thanks so much for being here. I am so glad that all of you are here. Today is Saturday Singles, one of my favorite things I do here where I just play with my single eyeshadows and I hauled quite a few from the Coastal Scents haul or their 99 cent hot pot sale, I don't know, a month and a half ago and I got a few, I think there's 52 in all, but this is what they look like, they're in this cute little flamingo palette that I got from Tracy over at Tracy Lee Beauty for my birthday. So basically we can blame Tracy for me buying more Coastal Scents hot pots, right? <laughs> at least that's what my brain says, so I don't get upset with myself. I've lost my brushes already. I have primed and set my eyes and I am just going to dive in. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do, but I want to continue playing with these hot pots because I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I buy items, I'm really excited to get them, and then I put them away because they're new and I feel like I need to use the old ones first. Okay, this is oatmeal tan. We're going to put that just in my transition. And my brush is clean, it's just stained. From the birthstone collab video the other day. Since it's clean, it'll work. So anyways, I, I do that with a lot of makeup where I put it away because it's new. Instead of getting use on it right away. And I'm trying to not, not have that mentality, which is very difficult. It, that one's a hard one to break because I feel like I need to use up my older stuff before I start playing with my new stuff. So this oatmeal tan is really nice. It's highly pigmented and it's blending out nicely. Do you guys like my bow? I found it the other day when I was cleaning. I picked it up. They, I want to say they had it on clearance or really heavily discounted on ColourPop. And I needed something to hold my hair back when I sleep. And I picked it up and I don't really like it for sleeping because it slides back. It still holds my hair, but it slides back enough that um, my little front frays fall out. But I like it. I think it's cute. It's definitely not a Lori look, but it's cute. But I, I did buy it for for sleeping and I, I just don't like that it slides back. It works fine. I have a scarf that I really like as well, but I thought it matched my shirt today, so I went with it because I was looking for something to pull my hair back with while I did my look. I'm not quite sure what we're going to do today. I'm thinking kind of fall vibes, but I don't know. I'm kind of in a rut not a rut so much as I'm really liking, you know, watermelons and peaches and pinks. And usually I like peaches and pinks and browns in the spring, but this year I'm, I've been loving them pretty much all year. I started wearing them in late winter and I've continued to wear them. So... I need to kind of break out of that rut, but I'm loving, I'm loving them so much. And I have so many oranges and peaches here that I want to play with, but I think we're going to go with a fall look. Only because it snowed here this week and it's freezing cold. <laughs> It was so darn windy during our winter, you know, intro, our introduction into what our winter may look like, that I really thought my windows were going to break. 
Okay, this is called Peach Brew. I think I'm going to put it into my crease and onto my transition onto that oatmeal tan. Is that the name? Oatmeal, oatmeal something. Yeah, oatmeal tan. I'm just going to build that up. I'm not quite sure. I may have picked up too much product. Was it last week during Saturday Singles that I talked about what I was reading? Well, here's a funny story. I have Audible, and I thought, you know, that you just turned in the book you read and just continue to get new books with the credits that you have. And of course, you're getting new credits every month, but I just figured it built up your arsenal, right? I think I was wrong, because I went to turn in a book that I had finished, like I had all the other books I had read, and I get a message. Please call. We would love to help you. Please call Blot for assistance. And then I saw uh, the, I saw a video where Audible was one of the sponsors and yeah talked about how if you don't like the book you can turn it back in and get a different book use and not lose your credit and I'm like oh maybe that's why they want to talk to me oops oops so here I've been reading all these books when I wasn't supposed to so I kind of feel bad, but on the other hand, you pay so much, and then you don't get to reuse those credits. That makes no sense to me, so I am rethinking Audible, and the only reason why I have Audible is because I have, you know, a fire, and it came as a complimentary thingy majiggy on with my fire and I was able to access books that I cannot access on other they're not available on other auto you know audiobook programs and so that's why I really stayed with audible but now that I realize that I was doing it wrong and that you don't get to you reuse your credits? I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. This is so expensive when I can go to another program for a lot less. I liked the convenience of it because if I'm downstairs, I can play it on my television so I can hear it better. Because I have a little traveling speaker that I take around with me, but the, for some reason the battery length isn't very long. So it, it only lasts me a couple of hours and there's days I will listen to a book for 10 plus hours sometimes. And so a speaker that only lasts two hours, it doesn't work for me. So, I'm really bummed about that because I like the selection of Audible, but I not for the cost when you don't get to reuse your credits. But right now I'm listening to a book I had. I've I have the or maybe I had, maybe I sold it, but I had the paperback version of it. It's The Cleaner by Mark Dawson, and it's this assassin, he's a state-ran assassin, so he works for um, Britain. I am going to take this shade right here called Baked Clay, and I am just going to put it into my trans, not my transition, but my crease, and maybe into my outer V, we'll see. And this one I'm being overly careful with. So anyways, back to The Cleaner by Mark Dawson. If you have not read it, 
you should because this is a state-sponsored assassin so you know he does the wet work for for Britain the 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 unsanctioned hits if you will so he's he worked his way up from bottom of the totem pole to number one literally he's called agent one I think is what he's called but he's kind of getting old and he old kind of getting old and he um he did not kill a child in his last job and now he wants to quit but you can't really quit that work right and so he ha he has one of their state sanctioned assassins after him while he's trying to help out the single mom with her young teenage boy who's getting into trouble and holy smokes so he's kind of turned himself from being a state run assassin to helping those in need he's trying to pay you know penance I guess for his past deeds because they're really bothering him and I'm still reading the book it's really good and it made me wonder why I had this book forever on my shelf and never read it in fact I had the whole series and I don't think they have anything but the cleaner on audible they have other books by Mark Dawson but not more from this series and I'm not sure I still have all the books but I'm hoping so because I'm really liking this series kind of reminds me of Tom Wood Tom Wood writes um, Victor the Assassin series and if you guys didn't notice I like thrillers <laughs> and anyways Victor he, he's a stone cold assassin. He's he's not state sanctioned in any way, shape, or form at the beginning, and he's stone cold. And people are coming after him. And Tom, the way Tom Wood writes, you really feel a lot of heartache for Victor. Um, while his profession is not something to you know to think is a respectable profession he he has a heart which i think you can write into a book but i don't know if assassins not state-run assassins that to me that's different and maybe it's not but it is to me but just those who do it for the money they're a whole different breed where state-run assassins, they're a breed unto them, themselves as well. But usually they're in it, you know, for the, to keep their country safe. Not all of them, but most of them. And I would, I would think because I think they keep kind of a tight rein on whether they are going over the edge into the dark side, if you will. And that's just my own thought. I don't know. I don't know any state ram assassins. I don't know any normal assassins. At least I never, I don't think I've ever met one. But really, would you know? Would you know if you did? Okay, I'm liking that baked clay on those other, that orange, that peach, what was it called? Peach peach brew and then oatmeal tan it kind of took on this pinky hue I really like it I think I might build up baked clay in the outer V so anyways I find Victor and Milton to be a lot of like the cleaner's name is John Milton I just find them to be a lot of 
a lot of like, you know, questioning their choices for their career choices and what drove them there, what basically pushed them in, into being an assassin, whether state state ran or in it for the money. Now, I have found in my assassin books, because I, I truly do like assassin books, I find the, I find the psychology behind an, an assassin to be really interesting. And yes, these are books, but I, if they're written well, they really delve into what created these assassins, right? And the whole backstory of their childhood and their youth and their early, early years and what created them. And I don't believe that they're really off the mark. Now, I'm not an assassin. I can't say that for sure, but I don't think they are. And I'll tell you why in a minute. I am going to take Phoenix Sun and I am going to put it on my eyeball. It doesn't really go with baked clay, however, does it? I'm loving that baked clay. I like it. It reminds me of how I felt about Southern Wood last week. I am going to take Bahama Mama and not on my inner corner. I'm not ready for my inner corner, but on the inner part of my lid. And I'm just taking this little pointer brush. I love this pointer brush for detail work. I have zero clue where I got it. I want to say maybe like Allure or Beauty or the bo or Boxy Charm. So and back to what I was saying, I love reading assassin books because I like to kind of pick through the psychology of assassins. And I don't read just fictional assassin books, I read nonfiction, but I just like to try to understand their whole thought process and why they chose to get into that business, whether it be fictional or nonfictional. I just find the whole the whole profession to be interesting. Would I want to meet a an assassin in a dark alley at night? No. Or day. I would not want to meet one anywhere, any day. Or any time of day and night. But it truly does fascinate me. And I really it fascinates me even more when they start to act and be a little human or a little humane, I should say. Not all of them are humane, but some of them are. I know I'm talking about death, like it's oh so easy and that's not what that's not what I'm saying at all. I don't think the art of taking a life is is okay, nor do I find it to be fantastical. I really like the study of criminal behavior. That is why that's that's why my field is criminology. So for me, I'm not surprised that this intrigues me, but to others, it may be a turn off. I need to put a little brown in here because this is a fall look. I'm going to take this beautiful shade called Rich Walnut. I think it's a shimmer shade. I'm going to just put it on the outside part of my V. And I am using this detail brush still. So I've been listening to lots of assassin books lately, whether they be state sanctioned or sanctioned. but. If you like thrillers and you like assassin books, check out Tom Wood or Mike Mike Dawson. Both of them are really good. Mike Dawson's are all independently published. 
but I know they're on Amazon. And Tom Wood, I think they were first written in another language, to be honest with you. And, um, but you can get them at the bookstore. They are harder to come, come by, but you can find them. And the first one is Time to Kill, I think. I could be wrong. I'll put the list of both of those series down below. So if you're interested, you can check them out. I don't know how I got on this topic, but... Oh, probably because I'm a little salty about Audible. I kind of lost baked clay in there, so I'm going to put a little baked clay in. Because I don't want to lose it. Because I actually think that makes this whole look. One of my favorite colors of fall is purple. And this one might not be dark enough. It's burnished red. It has kind of a reddish purple to it. I am just going to layer it over that walnut. What kind of books do you guys like to read? What's your favorite book of all time? My favorite book of all time is The Scarlet Letter. I'm not one to read books over and over again, but that one I have, there's just, there's just something about that story that really pulls at my heart. I think I'm going to take Golden Touch. We will see. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do this very softly. I probably should have left it be. Let's try Southern Belle, this really soft yellow, and just see. Okay, that'll work. I'm not going to go any further because I think I'm messing it up more and more. So I'm going to go do my face and I will be right back. All right, guys, I need to do my lower lash line. And I think I'm worried, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to just very carefully take this midnight blue here and dust it on my lower lash line. And when I say very little, I mean, can you see just that itty bitty spot right there? I'm hoping it gives more of a purple lean than a blue lean. And I could have gone and pulled out a purple single but since I just want to play with these new coastal scents that's why I'm sticking with this and I think that little amount of burnished red that was still on this brush kind of transferred with the midnight blue and I like that. I'm now going to take baked clay I'm going to take Southern Bell and just put it on top of burnished clay in this inner part but not take it onto my inner corner. For my inner corner I'm going to take this shade right here called Peach. Uh, it's okay. And then lightly pull Peach on top of Southern Bell. I'm going to line my Waterline with my Shimmering Bronze. I did line my eyes with Romance by Dose of Color. I did Romance all the way across my lid. It's a burnt orange. It's really pretty. So it probably doesn't show up as much as it would if I had done like a really like pale shade there. And then I took Ache Plant by Avon and I lined just the outer part of my upper lid where the dark shadows are just to give it a little more definition and I did put just a skosh on the lower lash line so when I smudged out Midnight Blue it probably pulled 
eggplant with it along with the burnished red that was on the brush. Oh, I need to put my Thrive Cosmetics eye brightener on my brow bone. Let me go throw on some mascara and I will be right back. All right, guys, this is my final look for Saturday Singles. I really like this look. I think it's pretty. I love the colors that I used. It's not as fallish as I was hoping it would be, but I still really like it, obviously, since this is what <laughs> this is what I crave at the moment. So those are all the eyeshadows I used. A crazy, crazy palette, but I think the end result is really, really pretty. That's a crazy, those are crazy shades, but I like this look. So guys, that is it for Saturday Singles. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you guys enjoyed what I talked about. I was not planning on talking about books, but it just kind of happened. What is, leave me a comment down below about your favorite book, but also what palette are you loving on right now? I would love to know guys please take good care be safe be smart i thank you for being here with all of my heart and i will talk to you on the next one bye